Hey there, thanks for stopping by. We're going to continue that series of going through all the parts, and today we are talking about the legendary Archon parts. Let's jump right in. Alright, so we're going to quickly talk about the parts. We're going to jump into the hall to find the Incarnate, and then we'll actually get into some gameplay. So the mind part is called Supernova, the body part is called Event Horizon, and soul part is called the Wormhole. All right, let's head to the hall and take a look at this incarnate. So what we're looking for is the Archon profile icon and uh, the gold border and the blue part buttons. Uh, that's going to be right here. So there's the gold border, blue part buttons, and the icon. Uh, we've got uh, death affinity icon. Uh, Incarnate as well, and we get that through having a death affinity or two or more death affinity parts. Uh, so Supernova has a death affinity, Event Horizon has a death affinity, and Wormhole has a death affinity. So as always, three is still greater than two. Uh, so simple math tells you that it's going to be a death uh, affinity incarnate. So let's take a look at the Archon itself. Uh, this one's all pink and uh, still being as epic as, <laughs> as always. Uh, still floating, still looking pretty badass, and kind of got that robotic, um, you know, just alien kind of looking uh, cyclops feel to it. Um, I don't know, just again, some of this artwork is just really unique, and I, I just love it. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get into the gameplay. The first skill we're going to use is Event Horizon. It's the body part. Uh, so let's go ahead and read it. Teleport to the highest space, attack, and blind enemies in your presence for one turn. Uh, so you're going to be able to teleport to, uh, just like it says uh, the highest space on the map. Again, it's the entire map. It doesn't tell you that you uh, only get to teleport in your presence. It's the entire map. Uh, so a great mobility. Uh, you can jump in and do a blind right away. And we'll talk about blind when we apply it. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at um, how it's how it could be used. I, you know, I just tested this a couple minutes ago and and I found that it might not be working as uh, it should be. Uh, right now, if we try to use it, it shows that there's no targets. Um, I'm currently on what would be considered the highest space on the map. Uh, so I'm I'm not sure if it's intended to block your teleport um, or if it really is uh, supposed to allow you to other uh, teleport to other spaces that are considered the highest space on the map. Uh, I've got a question out to, de to the developers and uh, when I get a response back, I'll go ahead and post it in the comments uh, section below. Uh, but for now, uh, we can move to a space that is lower than the highest space. And then we can actually go ahead and use it. So you see the entire map um, with all those highest spaces are being lit up. So you can actually select any of these spaces that's being that are being highlighted. Uh, right now, what we really want to do, though, is teleport to this incarnate. And we want to make sure that the space that we teleport to is within our, our, our presence uh, or the enemy incarnate is within within our presence, because if they are, we will actually go ahead and attack that incarnate, and we'll place a blind debuff, which is one of the most powerful debuffs in the game. So let's go ahead and uh, use this with the mindset of keeping that enemy incarnate within our presence of three. So we want to be within you know a few spaces here. So we'll go ahead and teleport to this space over here, and uh, that will be within the uh, presence. We'll go ahead and get a little bit closer so we can see it all happening. Uh, here we go. There we go. So you saw the line of teleportation. There was the attack. It did a pretty good amount of damage, actually. Um, I'm surprised that, that I actually did that much damage, but pretty good damage dealing ability. Uh, there's the debuff of blind, so you cannot select a target. So that incarnate can move around all at once, but can, it cannot attack. Um, it can heal, but um, it just it can't attack any enemy incarnates. Uh, also keep in mind, uh, notice here, that when we teleport, we always teleport uh, facing the, the direction that we left the space at. So we were pointing in this direction when we left, uh, so we end up in that direction. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the next skill. So we're going to talk about the mind part uh, for the legendary Archon parts, and it's called Supernova. Attack enemies in your presence, then if they are in front of you, attack them again and burn them for two turns. So there's a couple things that are going to go on here, and we'll break it down uh, sentence by sentence. 
So the first sentence here is attack enemies in your presence. So the red highlight that you see right now is the um, your presence. So you're going to be able to attack any uh, enemy incarnate that is in that presence. And your presence is based off of the pre or presence stat. And we have a stat of three here. So that's that's highlighting correctly. Uh, so you'll, you'll get that AOE attack right away. The second piece of it though is a little bit more complicated. Uh, so then if they are in front of you, attack them again and burn them for two turns. So whenever you see text in these cards on these skills that say in front of you, it doesn't mean that it's going to be um, in that triangle range. Uh, it's going to mean that it's directly in that line in front of you. So it's not going to be out here and here or these spaces here. It's going to be these three spaces. Now it's still based on your range stat, which we have a value of three. So we would expect that this square, this square, and this square are all attacked with that second attack. That second attack, if we hit an enemy incarnate, it's going to place that burn debuff, and we'll talk about that when that gets placed. So let's go ahead and use it and see what it looks like. There we go, perfect. So there was the AoE ability, hit pretty good. Uh, the secondary attack actually hit even stronger, and that kind of makes sense because the AoE modifier, I would expect that there's a modifier on AoE abilities to make them a little bit less powerful than more direct attacks. Um, so if there were enemy incarnates, we would have taken that, well, I think it was like six or 700 damage. Um, and then we had that direct line that did a thousand plus damage. Uh, so that's a pretty hard hitting ability. Uh, and then we also got the, the burn debuff. So the enemy incarnate is going to take 5% damage, um, per burn. Remember burn is stackable up to 10, uh, and it's going to, they're going to take that damage at the start of their turn. So it did apply for two turns. Uh, which is which is exactly what the skill says. So that's working great. All right, let's go ahead and move on to the last skill. All right, wrapping these skills up, we're going to talk about wormhole. It's the soul part. Uh, let's go ahead and read it. Teleport behind, then attack target enemy and create a rift in the space you left. Blocks revive. Uh, so this is specific um, to your your range stat. So you have a range of three. And uh, you're going to be able to teleport in that within that range. So you need to be pretty up close and personal with these enemy incarnates. Um, but what's going to happen is you're going to teleport behind, and then you're going to basically turn around to attack, and you're going to create a rift on this space. Now, just be careful here because if you try to teleport behind this enemy, and they have something behind them, whether it's the you know the edge of the map. Uh, or it's a rift, or it's another incarnate, or a zombie, whatever, some obstacle there, you will not be able to teleport. Uh, and, and if you can't teleport, you can't create that rift, so you won't be able to, the skill effectively um, gets a completely wasted. Uh, and it will allow you to target that enemy and uh, try to teleport, and right now it penalizes you by just not doing, it doesn't, basically not doing anything. <laughs> Um, so just, just be careful with that. You got to be mindful of your surroundings and the objects on the map. Um, but with that, let's go ahead and use it and see what it does. There we go. So you saw the teleport, you saw the damage, uh, killed the enemy incarnate and it added that rift, uh, where I was, uh, previously located. Uh, then I still have my move ability so I can run away a little bit if I want to, whatever, um, it just, uh, it's a pretty cool skill, um, gives you some damage and gives you some, um, line of sight, you know, objects that you can place on the map. So there we have it. That's the legendary Archon parts. Uh, I, you know, some of them <laughs> hit pretty, pretty darn hard. Uh, you know, I was, I was actually surprised by the damage it was doing, uh, on a couple of those parts. Uh, definitely going to be kind of, I think a glass cannon type build if you wanted to build this type of um archon incarnate uh that you know that um event horizon is going to allow you a ton of mobility uh it's on a pretty long cooldown so it's going to you know it, it makes sense that you know because it's on a long cooldown it's going to hit hard and you know pretty powerful skill um, but if you found this video you know informative and you liked it go ahead and hit that like button if you like the content and want more of it definitely toss me a subscribe uh, on the channel you know much appreciated uh, toss some comments down below. Which one of these do you think you're going to use in your builds? You know, which one do you think are the you know most powerful ones? Uh, what are you excited to see on the Archon in in the future? 
Um, you know, as always, I do appreciate you that you guys are watching. You know, thank you for sticking all the way to the end if you're watching here. And, uh, you know, I will see you in the next one if you care to join me again.